you guys, and welcome to another episode of Advanced Football X's and O's. So this week we're going to be talking about the different adjustments and technique that defenses use to help cover up their weaknesses. And this is often what separates good defenses from great defenses. For example, say we had two different teams. One of these teams on defense, they ran a bunch of different coverages. But when we faced this team on offense, as long as we could recognize pre-snap what coverage they were in, we knew we, we could get to a specific play and use it like a stretch or a rub or something that we knew we could get a free play in easy yards against that coverage. But say against the second team, they only ran one coverage the entire game. But this defense did a great job with different technique and adjustments to where they covered up those weaknesses so that the normal gotcha plays that we thought we had against that coverage, they just don't work. And what ends up happening is that we have to really scrap and fight for every yard we get against that defense. So the first defense, as long as we could recognize what coverage they were in, we knew we could carve them up. But the second one, even though we knew exactly what coverage they would be in on every snap, we have to really fight for our yards. And that first defense, we could probably label as being good, but that second one is what makes a great defense. So now we're going to go over some of these adjustments and some of these techniques. The first thing we're going to talk about is in man defense, how do we cover rub routes and pick routes? These, we've seen them absolutely destroy the NFL this year. And what happens is that this outside receiver just runs a slant, but he's not really concerned about running a good slant. He just wants to get in the way of this slot defender. And then our slot receiver just runs an out route underneath it, and it just often times comes wide open. So let's look at the Packers running it this year in week four against the Bears. So our outside receiver just going to run a slant, doesn't care about it being a good route, is just going to get in the way of this slot defender. And let's watch this happen. So let's stare at this outside receiver. Just kind of doesn't really give any care about running a good slant just gets in the way look at that slot defender has to go all the way around catch touchdown without even getting touched that that's as easy as it gets so there's often two common adjustments to defending this play and i think the bears here actually tried to employ one of them and it's not something that i really think is a good adjustment and what you do here is that you have one of these two corners you have one of them playing press and you have one of them playing off and the idea is that if this outside guy can press this slot receiver well enough, he can keep that slot or this slant route to be ran pretty shallow. And if that means if he's playing off far enough, that that slant won't get in his way because the slant is going to be too shallow and he's going to be deep enough to where he can just run around it. But I think that's what they tried to do here. And even though that slant does get run pretty short, you can see how he still gets caught in the trash and he can't go around it easily. It's still a free catch and a touchdown. So I don't think that's a very good adjustment. But there's one other that we can do that I think is really, really good. And that's called banjo and, or sometimes called zebra. It's really just a code word for switching. So what we do here is that our two defenders would know before the snap hey, if we both call Banjo, Zebra, whatever our call is, we're going to switch and cover each other's man. So what would happen is that off the snap, our guy starts running with the slant route and our slot receiver starts running with the out route. And then both of them realize that the routes are going to cross. They call Zebra, Zebra, Banjo, Banjo, whatever it is, and that they both pivot out and they both cover their respective receivers. So what would happen here is that as long as we get good communication, we get a good switch and that we can cover both routes. We don't deal with the rub anymore. We don't have to run through trash. However, with bad communication, if one of our guys switched and our other guy didn't, we'd end up with two defenders on the same receiver in a wide open route, which is just as bad. And this is, I think this is kind of the issue that the Patriots have been having a little bit this year. We've heard they've been having communication issues. It can often be related to something like this, where you just have a simple call where your defenders need to switch, but if the communication is not good enough and that switch doesn't happen, everything breaks down and you get busted coverages. So communication is key with this adjustment, but if done properly, this can absolutely eliminate this type of route. However, we will, I'll briefly talk about it. There is an adjustment to this and that if the offense does know you're going to switch like this, what they'll actually do is that this out route will actually just pivot back inside when they go to switch. So there's some adjustments that the offense can do to just kind of second level or just they just know what the defense is going to do so they think them one step ahead. It's possible, but we don't really care about that. We at least have to be able to cover the rub route. If we cannot cover the rub route in itself, we don't care what the adjustment is for the offense afterwards. We have to be able to cover this route. And as we saw with the Bears, it was a free touchdown, a free seven points. That is just, that is bad. You cannot have that. So we can either kind of change our alignments, what the Bears tried to do didn't work, or we can switch. I really am all for switching. 
So that's man against run. Well, let's talk about cover two against smash. You've probably heard me talk about this play a lot now, but it is honestly the most common concept against cover two. And what happens is that this slot receiver running this corner, this corner post route, this safety in itself, even though we're not stretching the safety, we're not doing anything complicated to him, it is so hard for him to cover this corner post route. It's just, it really is. Just the alignment, the leverage that he gets, it's really, he needs help from this corner. So what Smash does is we put a route short of the corner, this hitch route, and we run the route deep over top of him. And normally as an offense, we would say, okay, if this short, if this corner stays short on this hitch route, we're throwing deep route. If the corner drops on the short route or on the deep route, we're going to throw the short route and we're going to get some yards after the catch. However, there's some advanced technique we can do with this corner. And what we want to do with this corner is we were going to use an eyes and body technique. And what that means is that we are going to use this corner's body to cover the deep route. So when he recognizes smash and he sees he has a short route in front of him and he sees the slot receiver going deep, instantly he's going to start backpedaling and he's going to start getting depth underneath that smash concept. He's just going to expect it to happen. And while he's backpedaling, he's going to keep his eyes straight forward. He's going to keep his eyes on the quarterback and on the short receiver so that if the quarterback sees that he's dropping deep onto this route, when that quarterback turns, when the quarterback turns his hips and goes to throw it to the shore of the route, he instantly breaks forward and tries to get up there for either an incompletion or an instant tackle. Just give him no yards after the catch, and this can be a great technique to absolutely eliminating the smash concept. So now let's watch the Bucks run this concept in week four against the Giants. So what we have is we have Brent Grimes and we have Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham is going to be running the corner post route, and we're going to have a tight end actually leaking out to kind of replace that hitch route. But Brent Grimes here, he's going to let Beckham pass him. It's cover two, but he instantly recognizes, oh, he's going deep and have a short route underneath him. This isn't exactly the prototypical cover two because we are going to have a linebacker helping coming out to cover this route, but the concepts are still the same. We still have Brent Grimes noticing that it's a smash concept. He's getting depth and watch his head. He keeps his head back on Eli and look at our safety. Odell completely turns that safety, and once again, that cover two safety has an insanely hard time getting out there and covering this concept. So Brent Grimes keeps his eyes down the field while using his body to cover Beckham. So that say that linebacker wasn't there on this shorter route, and Grimes was going deep, if he sees Eli turn to throw this shorter route, he could have broke and gotten short on that and got the, gotten the tackle. So that's the eyes and the body technique. Once again, it's absolutely vital that we have these adjustments to help cover these concepts that normally destroy our coverages. So against man, we need to be able to cover rubs. With cover two, we have to be able to cover smash. Here, the eyes and bodies technique. So the last one we're gonna talk about is cover three. And with cover three, we're talking about four verticals. And with four verticals, normally what we end up getting is that our corners end up just pretty much being man to man with these outside receivers going deep. Now we get two seam routes that just horizontally stretch our deep third safety. He just has the hardest time covering both of these routes. The quarterback will look him off or do a pump fake to one, throw it to the other. It's just super hard for the safety to, to cover both of these routes. One of them will almost always be open. So we have two different adjustments that we can try and do to cover them. The first one is kind of something you'll see on lower levels of football, and that's that we'll actually have these corners getting in between the two deep routes. Instead of running with this outside receiver, they'll just kind of get more in between both of them. So what ends up happening is that we have a play on both of these outside routes. And in high school football, and maybe even some college quarterbacks, they have a really hard time throwing these sideline streak routes, these sideline go routes. So what ends up happening is that they end up putting too much air under them, they don't have very good accuracy. Our corner can oftentimes still make a very good break on that ball and break it up. However, when we're talking about the NFL with like Tom Brady and all that, they'll drop absolute dimes. This adjustment isn't very good when we're talking NFL, but it is something that does exist in lower levels of football. So what ends up happening is that all three of our deep defenders kind of split the difference in the middle of everything, and that we just hope that the core of the back, we have enough time to kind of break onto whichever throw he tries to make. It's an okay adjustment, but really good core of the backs will tear this adjustment apart. The other adjustment that we can do is that with our corners dropping deep, what's going to happen is that our slot defenders will also drop deep with it and they'll get underneath these seam routes. 
So what ends up happening is with them underneath the seam routes, the quarterback can't just do it like a straight up bullet pass to the seams. He's going to have to get some air under the ball, put some touch on it, and have it kind of arc in. And when it's arcing in, that gives our safety plenty of time to break out there. Because that ball has to arc over, our safety is going to have a play to break out on both of those seam routes. So this can be a very good adjustment, and it's often something you will see in like the NFL against four verticals. However, the weakness to this is that no longer is this short defender in his flat zones. Because if you see on the left here, normally he's going out to these flat zones, but with him dropping deep, we don't have that short defender. So what ends up happening is that the offense, it, while this could look like four verticals while they're running it, instead of it being four verticals, they could have like a deep in coming out, or this could be like a short in coming in. And now what ends up happening is that because the seam defender dropped deep, we could run some routes underneath it. Or say we do have these two verticals on the left, we could have a crossing route from the right that absolutely comes open and gets a ton of yards after the catch. So this is kind of the back and forth that you might see with especially cover three teams of how do they cover the seams. Do they drop deep on them and can we get underneath them? Do they not cover the seams at all and can we throw them? There's kind of a really big back and forth here and there's not really a good answer, but I think the best answer is that you absolutely have to cover four verticals and if they do try and throw like some crossing route underneath it, you just have to have good tackling, good awareness, you have to come up and make the play. So that's kind of the issue with cover three is definitely four verticals. And to transition into our next episode, we're actually going to look at something from Nick Saban. So here's a quote from Nick Saban, and I'll post this article. This is a website called Brophy Football Blogspot, and I'll post a link to it. It's a really good website to learn some really advanced stuff about football. But here is a quote from Nick Saban, and it says, When you're playing a passing team, you always have a better chance with split safeties. But with all the zone read and zone option stuff that we see, all the spread stuff, sometimes you've got to be able to play a middle of the field coverage to get an extra man in the box. And if you think about the last episode where I talked about cover one and cover three, those absolutely are the coverages that we want to run to, that we want to play to stop the run. However, if we're playing a spread team that throws a lot, we really want to get in cover two. And this is kind of the back and forth he's talking about here. And moving on, he says, we got to the point to where the reason that we do this, when everybody started going spread, we couldn't play three deep zone. He had to start playing cover two. And that this started with the Cleveland Browns. I was the defensive coordinator in the early 90s and Pittsburgh would run Seattle on us, four streaks. That is the four verticals that we're talking about. And then he says that then they would run two streaks and two out routes, and they call this a pull from two by two. And what this concept is, is that the seam receivers continue on their vertical routes. However, our outside receivers either do comebacks or outside breaking uh, deep outs. And that he says that, so we got to where we could not play three deep zone because they, we, we would reroute the seams and then we played zone and that they played a country cover three is the spot drop zone that we're talking about and that they would drop to their spots, reroute the seams, then break on the ball. And he says that, well, when Marino was throwing it, the old break on the ball shit doesn't work. And then, so when they tried to stop this, they could not play cover three. And then when you cannot play cover three, what's next? You have to play cover one. They have to play the other safety in the box. But when their receivers are better than their defenders, you cannot play cover one. And then he goes on to say that we got to the point to where we couldn't play cover one. So now we couldn't play an eight man front. In, in the 1994 season with the Browns, they went 13 and five. Five of those losses were to the three of the three of the five losses were to the Steelers, and that they gave up the fifth fewest points in the history of the NFL. But they continued to lose to the Steelers because they could not play an eight-man front to stop the run because the Steelers would absolutely ruin them when they tried to play either cover one or cover three. And he goes on to say that they actually ended up coming up and inventing a new concept of how can they play cover one and cover three at the same time and get the benefits of both of them. And this is what he calls the rip Liz match is what they invented. And that's just the fancy words for saying pattern matching zone. And that is honestly one of the biggest inventions in the NFL in the last like 15 years, 20 years, whatever it might be now. It's absolutely the biggest invention. And in the next episode, that is what we are going to be talking about. So I hope you guys learned something. Feel free to leave some comments if you have some questions. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next episode.